Hey everybody, it's Brad. Today uh, I'm going to do a video on using the magic wand tool to digitize from a backdrop. I know I did this uh, in class before, but I didn't have a video on it um, because I didn't used to have the ability to make these videos on my own computer because um, I didn't have the Floriani software on here, but I got it on here. So here we go. Uh, first thing we're going to do is create a new design from the My Floriani Today little menu here. So create a new design. Uh, and then we need to bring the picture that we want to trace in to the program. And the way you do that is you go up to File and Load Backdrop. So left click on Load Backdrop. Uh, and then you need to go to where you have the, uh, the image that you're going to use. Um, I have mine in a folder called Digitizing Images, so maybe if you download it off the internet you might have it in uh, in your C drive, users, and then your name, and then pictures or downloads. That's a common place for stuff to get downloaded to. Um, but as I said, mine uh, is in this digitizing images folder. So I'm going to select the image. Once you find your image, just select it and choose open. Okay, now here's my backdrop image. It's uh, this time of the Baltimore Ravens. Um, and before we proceed, you want to change the size of this. And the only way that you can do that is to go over to your design properties right here. And if you click on this tab right here, it's like a little landscape picture. If you hover over it, it says backdrop. If you click on that, then you can change the size. Um, so if I go in here, the width is 20 inches. That's way too big. The height is 10. Uh, say I want to sew this out in a and it may be a 4x4 four four hoop, um, like I want to put it on a t-shirt or something. So I'll set the width to 4 inches and hit apply. Much smaller. Um, okay, so now it's so small that I can't really see all that well, so I want to zoom in. And the way you do that is just use your mouse wheel. Um, just, just rolling with my mouse here. Okay, so this is a decent enough size. Uh, and, well, Time to start tracing it and applying stitches. So the first thing I want to do is go up and make sure I've got complex fill selected up here. We're just going to do a basic complex fill. Um, you can do other stitch types, but um, for this purpose we're just going to do complex fill. It'll work for making most things. And then we choose the magic wand tool right here. And then we got to pick what color we're going to do first. I'm going to do this kind of golden, deep gold color first. Uh, so I'm going to go down to my color palette down here and select, I'm going to left click on the first color, left click, and then I'm going to choose from my color palette. Yeah. I'll choose this Indian orange color here. Okay, with that selected, I now simply left click on the first area that I want to generate, which is going to be this golden area here. You can hear my daughter in the background. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, so I left clicked it, traced my area. Good. And now I just right click and generate the stitches. And you can't tell because I don't have the 3D turned on, but that just generated the stitches. Um, so I'm going to turn the 3D on so we can see it. There we go. Okay, so that traced the uh, outer line here. Now, this is the same color on the inside, um, but I want to layer that. Uh, on top of this white. So I'm not going to trace it yet. I'm just going to kind of proceed to the black here. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to go down and change my second color to black. So I left click on number two and scroll, scroll through until I find black. Um, charcoal gray is close enough for me. And I select OK. Now I have to go after that. I have to right click on it to make sure that's the active color. So I right click on it and then go and left click anywhere inside this black color here. So I left click. Good. It's traced it. I'm going to right click. You actually have to right click a couple of times to get this to generate. So I just click, click, click and it, and it does it. Okay, so now my black outline here is traced. So that's good. And we need the purple. So I go back down to my color palette, left click on the third color, and choose a purple that I like. OK, say OK. Now right click the color to select it, and then left click, 
and it traces my area. Right click a couple times. The other thing you can do is just hit the select button up here and that'll instantly generate the stitches. So either way. Um, so now looking at this I think I'll do the red of his eye next. So I left click on my next color which is the fourth one. Choose a red. Say OK. Right click to select. Oh, <laughs> look what I've done. I actually still had the purple area highlighted. Um, so what I want to do is go and right click back on the purple so that it makes this purple again. Um, and then I'm going to click off of the purple area and then right click on the red. These are mistakes that are pretty common, easy to make. Um, so now uh, I have to go. Now look, I click and, and all it's doing is selecting things. So what happened? Well, when I clicked off, I no longer have the tool selected um, that I had selected before, which was the complex fill tool. So I have to go back up, select the complex fill tool again. Now see I've got my cursor's little magic wand again. So anyway, the whole point of this was to be able to trace this red area here. So I'm going to left click that, generate it by right clicking a few times, left click that, again I'm just right clicking a couple times and it generates, okay so now I've got the red, now I want this white in here, in here, and in here on the eye, around the B and on the beak. So I'm going to go make a white color, make a white, okay let's find white, that's sandstone, pure white, say okay. Uh, and now I need to right click on my white uh, color, number five here, to select it. And then I just click anywhere in this space. Okay, so what I did there was I hit the select tool to generate. And if you do it that way, then you have to go back up and choose the complex fill again for your next one. So I go ahead and hit the next one. I'm just going to right click a couple times, there we go. It takes like three right clicks for that to actually generate. Um, I'm not sure why that is, just the way that it is. So then I go down to the beak, I'm going to left click once, and it traces it. I right click a few times, and there it is. And the same with the eye, left click, and then right click a few times, and there it is. You can hear my microwave going off. Well, now I just noticed that there's a spot that I missed, the inside of this B. I never traced it um, to be the same color as uh, this purple here. So that's easily remedied. I just go down here and choose the purple color that I used for the this part. Right click on it, and then left click, generate it, left click, generate it. Okay. And then my last, I want to do the inside of the B. So I right click on my first color, which was the same as the outline color here. Left click on the bottom part of the B, and then right click a few times. Left click on the top part of the B, and right click a few times. And there's my Ravens logo. Now, to make sure that this is going to sew out nicely, what I want to do is go up to my file, Scroll down to Save to Sew. Left click that. And uh, just whatever type of fabric you're going to sew it out on. You want to go down and pick, let's say I'm going to sew it out on a PK knit. Now I used the magic wand to do this, so I want to make sure that it knows I used the magic wand. So PK knit, magic wand. Left click to select that. Um, type of design. I would call this. Well, it's only giving me a medium option. Okay. Well, I guess it's medium then. I would have called it dense, but it's only letting me do medium, so we'll do medium. You're going to hoop the fabric. Yes, I am. And we're going to hit next. Now, on this next screen, we hit apply. It's telling me that I should only do this if I made the design in this application, which I did. So, yes, I want to continue. And when you hit next, it gives me little tips here um, on how to sew it out. So I can read those, I can print those, you know, whatever I want to do. 
Now I just hit finish, and now I can go ahead and save the design. So I'm going to save it in this designs folder. Um, I'll save it under sports. And we'll call it Ravens logo. Okay, and hit save. That's it. See you in the next video.